We're finishing up our form and we're working with the file membershipworking.pdf, which we've been building over the past several videos. If you've been following along, this is where we left off in the previous video. In this case, our form is essentially complete, but we want to add one more special kind of field onto this form, which is a submit button. We saw buttons before in the Acrobat Essentials course, and buttons can do many things, including interacting with our form fields. But a submit button will allow users to click the button and automatically send the form or its contents to us by email. The way we'll do that is to go back into form editing mode. So we'll open the tools panel and in the forms category, we'll click edit. And we'll add a new field. In this case, we'll choose button. We'll put the button right down here at the bottom and we'll drag out the size that we want it to be. And when we release the mouse button, we can give this button a field name of submit. We'll click on all properties to bring up the property inspector and we'll give it a tool tip. Click to submit this form by email. For appearance, we'll change the border color to a dark blue and we'll change the fill color to a lighter dark blue. We'll set the font size to 10 and we'll change the text color from black to white. Under Options, we'll add the label Submit Form. For the behavior, if you think back to the Acrobat Essentials course on buttons, we can have different visual effects that mimic the pressing of a button. We'll let this one be Push. Let's go ahead and move over to the Actions tab. We'll want to assign an action to this button. When we click the button, we want it to perform a specific function. If you remember actions from the Acrobat Essentials course on interactivity, we want to let mouse up be the trigger, and that's after the user has clicked and then released the button. Rather than execute a menu item, we'll look further down the list here, and we'll choose a special action, which is submit a form. We'll click on add to add this action to the list, and when we do, we get the form submit criteria. We'll start with where do we want to submit this form? The entry here is asking for a URL, and if we're working in a web server environment, we can have this form submitted directly into a script running on our web server that will process the data, and that would be with an HTTP address. However, in most cases, if we're not in a server environment and we're using forms in an ad hoc fashion, we're going to want to receive them by email. For email, we're going to want to enter a URL that starts with the word mail to, followed by a colon. That's a special kind of URL that will invoke the default mail client on your system. After mail to, we type the email address of the person whom you want to receive the form. In this case, I'll have the form sent to me, and once the URL is chosen, we'll need to choose the export format. We can export as FDF, which is Form Data Format. This will be just the data and not the entire form. This may be useful if you have a rather large PDF file with a smaller form included. This will also be the way data is submitted from Adobe Reader if usage rights have not been enabled, as we saw in an earlier video. You can choose as well to submit in HTML or XFDF, which is an XML version of FDF. You can also choose to submit the complete document. All of these will work well in terms of collecting the data back for consolidation, but we'll choose the PDF format and then we'll click on OK. Now we've set up our submit button and we can click on close and we'll go ahead and close out of form editing. Our form is ready for prime time and we can test it out. We can choose from the drop down list, we can choose the radio buttons. And when we have everything set up the way we want, we can save the form. If you've entered data into the fields, don't forget to delete the data before you save the form because the data will be saved into the form if you leave it there. And there's a shortcut to clearing the data out. If you click on more form options, you can simply click clear form and the form will be cleared. Now we can save this form and we'll be ready to distribute the form as we'll see in a future video.